Hello. Lola is going to help me talk about dahlias today. We're going to talk about some of our successes and some of our failures from the 2021 season. It was my first year growing, so I think I've learned tons. I've got my spreadsheet ready, so let's talk about it. We might as well start with failures. Um, there was a few things a few things happened this year. I don't think I'm alone in that. Um, you know, one of one of the things that seemed to be a problem for a lot of people this year was gall. And I talked about it in the spring video. I had a package from Walmart that had gall. I threw it out, I didn't plant it. I inspected everything else carefully. And in the end, I, when I dug everything up, I, I planted everything, I thought everything was healthy. And at the end of the day, I did have six tubers that I pulled up that were definitely infected with gall and every single one of them was from Walmart. So going forward, there will be no more box store dahlias here. Um, I'm only growing from, or I'm only purchasing from Canadian producers that grow their own dahlias. I am avoiding the imports at all costs. Um, most of the ones that I threw out were cafe au lait, so that's disappointing. I think I have one healthy one left, time will tell, and I had to throw out Blue Boy as well. Um, so I have, I have none of those left. That's okay, it wasn't one of my favorites anyway. Um, another issue that I had in the spring, I lost a few tubers. There was one tuber that I think I purchased that didn't have any live eyes. That was the only tuber I had fail. Um, the other ones that ended up failing, um, they started out, I started everything in pots early um, to get a jump on the season and they succumbed to pests. So either we had a lot of slugs this year. It was a wet early spring. I've never seen that many slugs here in 10 years that I've lived here. Um, and earwigs was another, another problem. Um, you know, some of the plants were, you know, one or two inches high when I planted them in the ground and some of them could never get past being chewed back. Like they couldn't grow fast enough. They were being chewed too fast. Despite, um, you know, I had um, diatomaceous earth that I was using on an almost daily basis. Um, they just couldn't get ahead of the pest. So next year, I think I'll wait until they're a little larger before I actually plant them in the ground. The other pest issue that I had, um, a couple of the plants that I planted that were failing, like they seemed to get past being chewed back, but um, you know, once they were three or four inches tall, they just kind of wilted and died. And I dug those tubers up. This happened to maybe, I don't know, four overall. Um, it, they almost looked like an empty potato skin, and I think it was wireworm. Um, they, they get into the tuber and do a lot of damage, and then it essentially just rots out, I think, is what happens. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I saw two wireworms when I was digging up all the tubers, but that was, you know, out of, out of like 30 or 40 clumps, two I don't think is an excessive amount. Um, I don't know if letting the plants get larger before I plant them in the ground will help, or I've seen a lot of people use like trap potatoes that they'll dig up and that'll help them remove the pest. Um, I think you can get beneficial nematodes. You can you can plant a fumigant crop, I believe, like a mustard or something that helps. I in the past in the, in the vegetable garden I have I have seen damage from wireworm on potatoes on my sunchokes and on garlic and onions but not not to a level that I ever found distressing or as losing a lot of crop but you know 
daily is a serious business. So, you know, we have to take care of this now. It's affecting the flowers. <laughs> so um, I might be trying a few things in the spring to try to combat that. So that's it for the failure. Well, except for when I dug them up, um, you know, there, there, were, there were some more tubers with gall. They looked healthy in the spring and they were all Walmart tubers. So big box, big box stores are over for me and we're sticking to the small guys now. Um, so I won't go over all of the ones that died. If I, if I, if they were in the spring video and I don't talk about them, they succumbed to something. If, if I said they were from Walmart, they, it was probably gall and everything else, it would be, you know, either slugs, earwigs or, or the wireworms. So what did we grow? Let me get my spreadsheet here. Thomas Edison. Um, it was from Walmart. The tubers do look do look healthy when I dug them up, and I hope they remain that way because it ended up being one of my favorites. Um, the flower, it's a deep purple. It's it's the prettiest royal purple. The flowers, I would say, are as large as the cafe au lait, um, and I love them. I had two plants. I will for sure be planting at least two, assuming assuming all of my tubers um, survive winter, which we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, like what, what the plan is here. Um, definitely going to be growing those next year. Wine-eyed Jill. Um, ended up with a couple of those. I had purchased one from Florissa um, and one from... It was part of the mix pack that I had gotten from the Canadian one of the Canadian growers. And I, I think they changed over the season in the, in the beginning of the, like when they first started blooming, I would say most of the dahlias this year started blooming mid August and we had a crazy warm fall. Like normally we will have a fairly hard frost by the end of September and, uh, and like a killing frost in early October this year, like we just had our killing frost in November, like the first week of November. So I had dahlias till November 1st. It was amazing. Um, but wine eyed Jill was a little underwhelming. Like she was a little washed out in the beginning of the season. And later in the year, the, the purple center darkened up and some of the purple on the petals darkened and then I was very in love with her. So, so why not Jill gets a prime spot next year? Um, two plants was not nearly enough. So, um, I would like to, if I have space and, and I haven't figured out how much space and how many I'm ordering and haven't figured any of that out yet. I know I will have way too many and I won't have space for them, but that's a next year problem. So in my perfect mind right now, there will be four why not Jill's. Um, Silver Years was one of the few blushes that survived the pest pressures. Um, it was a Florissa um, tuber as well. Um, mine was pretty white. Um, I, it definitely was a Silver Years. Um, the last two rows of petals had some blush on them. And when you flipped it over on the back of the petals, you could see the pink more prominent. Um, and, and I don't know... I definitely saw the light affect the cafe au lait, so I don't know if it was that kind of thing that it wasn't getting enough light because it was in the back of a, of of the row, like up against the house with a plant in front of it. So um, it'll be interesting to see if it changes next year. Ivanetti was one of my favorites. It was one of the first to bloom. The very first to bloom was... Um, actually um do i even have it on my list yep the very first to bloom was i'm calling it bride to be i don't know if it's actually bride to be it looks like bride to be but it was it was in i had two cafe au lait packages from walmart one was straight cafe au lait's they all did bloom true to cafe au lait and they all had they all had gall when i dug them up those were all thrown out the other package was a mixed pack and I ended up with one cafe au lait 
none of the other ones that should be in the mix, like Royal or I forget what the other one's called now. Um, but they were like Cafe Ole Sports. But I ended up with this white one. And I was really glad because I hadn't ordered any white dahlias. This one was fantastic. It was the first bloomer. It was prolific. It went with everything. Um, and, it and it was one of my favorites. So assuming it remains disease-free, um, I will be growing multiples of it next year as well. Um, Ivanetti, yes. It was one of the earliest bloomers as well. Um, you know, it's a burgundy ball. It has, it has like blue and purple undertones to it, especially near the center. I really liked it. Esley was one that was a surprise. If, if I say it was a surprise, it was part of the, it was part of that variety pack, right? Like I hadn't picked it out. I was really glad I had it. I ended up with two of them. Um, a really pretty like baby pink or maybe not baby pink, like bubble gum pink or something with yellow petals at the base. Um, and a good size. It, it, it uh, was a prolific bloomer too. Um, I had two of them. I think two is probably enough. I won't grow any more than two. If I didn't say Ivanetti, I think I had two plants of those as well. I had ordered one and then one was part of that variety pack. Um, two is plenty, I think, for Ivanetti for me. Another surprise was G.H. Lemers. Um, it was quite large. I wouldn't call it um, a dinner plate by any stretch. Um, and it was, it was a bright pink. The really cool thing about it was in the sun, there was like an iridescence in the petals. Like they almost sparkled. It was so pretty. Um, I had one plant of it this year. I think two would be, two would be nice. I'll try to fit two in next year if I can. Ben Houston was another surprise. Um, it was... I, I haven't looked it up. I don't know, and I don't know my forms very well. I think it would definitely classify as a dinner plate. It was as big as Thomas Edison um, and Cafe Au Lait. But what I loved about it, um, you know, it's kind of like an orangey yellow color. It's not a color I'm usually, I usually gravitate to, but it was a nice, like it is a nice orange color. It's not, it's not too bright. It goes with a lot of other things um but i loved the vase life of it for for a dinner plate like the cafe au lait and the um and ben or thomas edison don't have the vase life that ben houston does and, and i really enjoyed that about it um the next one was boom boom yellow um which was a florissa tuber um, it, I don't think it's boom, boom, yellow. When I look up, when I look boom, boom, yellow up, it's, it's like a light buttery, creamy yellow color. And this one was quite bright. Um, it was definitely, it's, it's yellow. It was really pretty. It was a late bloomer. Um, it was fairly prolific once it started. I would say like mid, it would be like a middle, middle bloomer. Um, and, and I'll try it again next year. Um, then I have Blight and Softer Gleam. Very similar to Sunny Boy in a lot of ways, except larger and softer in color, if that makes sense. Um, it, I really, I really liked it. Um, the center was darker and the tips of the petals were darker and I would almost say the color was the same it, I would call it like a yellow ball except those tips in the center were the color of Cornell bronze if that makes sense um, I, I'll grow it again next year I probably won't need more than two um, the next one keeping on the yellow train was Sylvia or Marn, as it's also called. I think it was my favorite yellow. Um, it, 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 it leaned orange, like it was an orangey yellow, but such a clear, true, pretty color. Um, and the form of the flower is gorgeous. Um, I, I had two of them. 
this year and I will make space for at least two next year. And if I have extra space, it will get more space. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Cornell Bronze, I had one of this year. It lived up to its reputation. It's like a solid, solid performer. Um, the color is interesting. It's, uh, it was another one that kind of was a chameleon and changed over the season. Um, I would have called it like a rusty, a rusty or an orange color at the beginning of the season. And by, by the fall, like September, October, it was leaning like a dusty, a dust, dusky pink tone. Like you could see some rose in it. Um, I really, I really liked it. J.S. Dorothy Rose. Oh, what a beauty. Um, it was, it was a very late bloomer. Again, it was in the second row up next to the house and behind some other plants. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. Once it started, it was a prolific bloomer. Um, large rose berry colored blooms with you know, there was streaking and variation within the petals. I really, really liked that one. And I hope, I think it was one of the ones that wasn't a great tuber producer for me. And if I can get multiple plants out of it next year, I will plant multiples. Um, it was really pretty. Um, Sunny Boy is the last... Um, like last one I want to talk about, I guess. Um, Sunny Boy. It was a bright yellow. It was, I think, after Bride to Be, Ivanetti, Sunny Boy, and and Cornell Bronze were the first to bloom. And those those three, like Ivanetti, Cornell Bronze, and Sunny Boy together, were really pretty. I'll throw a picture up. Um, it would not have been one that I would ever gravitate towards or pick, but it was in that, uh, surprise pack as well. And I ended up with two of them. Um, I think two is plenty. Uh, that thing bloomed its little heart out of all of the, of all of the plants that I grew this year. I think it was the most productive, um, so I, I won't ever need to grow more than two, I don't think. Um, the next one I want to talk about, the next two I want to talk about, one is an anemone, one's a single. H.S. Juliet and Mexico, which is the anemone. Um, they were similar growth habits. Um, they were between like one and two feet. They weren't very tall. Their stems were not as long and more prone to like being curved and having weird bends in them. And they weren't as strong, especially Mexico. Like that flower is a lot heavier than the single and it just didn't support the flower the way like the balls do, for example. Um, I think those two, I love them and they're pretty but I don't think they'll be with the other dahlias next year. I think they're, they lend themselves better towards um, being a bedding flower, like in amongst your other garden plants. And that's probably where they'll end up for me next year. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the Cafe Olay. I had four Cafe Olay's blooming, I think, four or five. And all but one had gall. And the one that didn't have gall was in a different package, so I hope it's okay. Because I get what the hype is about, man. Those are pretty. Uh, they're gorgeous. Some of them leaned more pink. Some of them leaned more um, like mocha-y or beige. Um, I have heard that light has a lot to do with that. And again, I had some in the front row, some in the back row, but I didn't really notice that, you know, the pink ones were the ones that were in the front or anything. I, I don't know why, why some were pinker and some were more beige. 
they were all pretty. In fact, I think the ones I enjoyed the most were the ones that had both colors, like the ones that had like the pink edges and were beige in the center, like just that variation was really nice. Um, they go with everything. I, I think I like if I can divide that one tuber into four plants, I will probably grow four again. I even even more than that would be would be okay with me. I don't think I have the space. Um, the only thing about the cafe au lait is I found them really hard to use. Um, they're kind of a lot of them tend to be like kind of downward facing, so you kind of have to prop them up on something else in your bouquet. Um, but you know, with practice, maybe I'll get better at that. I wanna get some flower, flower frogs and maybe that will help me. Just, you know, shoved in a vase. They had, they didn't have the support that they needed to um, be their best. Um, so I guess that's it for what I grew this year. Um, most of the places that I'm going to be ordering from aren't selling tubers until the spring. I have made one or two orders. Just one second. My dog is destroying a dishcloth. She's in trouble now. She's sucking up. Um, yes, I know you're sweet. So most of the places that I'm ordering from won't have available tubers until spring, but I have made two orders for next year. The first one, I have ordered Black Narcissus, Cornell, which if it's anything like, you know, it's sister Cornell Bronze, uh, it will be wonderful. Um, Rosella, I was able to replace Sweet Love, which was one of the ones I had ordered and planted last year and was one of the ones that, you know, the bugs destroyed. Um, Seduction, Evelyn, and Ivana are the ones that I've ordered from the first place. And then I did put in a smaller order and was able to pick up Short Track, which looks like a really interesting um, tuber. Um, Wizard of Oz, which I think is actually a three pack. So surely to God, I will have a blush dahlia next year. Um, Boom Boom White. And is that it? Or was there one more? Oh, Roco Rocco or Rococo. Rocco. I think it's Rocco. Um, which is one of those mini, mini pompon dahlias. So that will be fun. There's some others on my wish list. Um, I, there's some last year that I had ordered and didn't get to grow and didn't get to see bloom. So I, I would like to, uh, replace those like Caitlin's Joy is one and um, Jowie Winnie um, some some colors like that and of course everyone wants you know um, Castle Drive and Peaches and Cream and of course I want those too so we will see what I'm able to get my hands on and you can be sure there will be an update uh, for 2022 what I'm growing in 2022 so wish me luck in my storage. Um, I did decide, I know, there's, I know there's great debates and differences in how people store their dahlias. I, I did wash them and I kind of experimented with dividing. Some of them I've divided, some of them I've left as a whole clump, some of them I've left, you know, with two or three tubers in a, in a smaller clump. Um, the, the Dilly Society member that I purchased tubers from this spring lives fairly close to me and he stores his in vermiculite. So that's what I did. And my house is way too warm. Uh, they're in the basement. It's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's probably the best I can do. I might be able to get it down to 60, but I don't, I don't have a garage or anywhere, um, 
that would be cooler that wouldn't freeze so we're gonna just work with what we have um, wish me luck folks so that's the 2021 daily a year wrapped up thanks for watching